strategic financial management. We are discussing about working capital management. In this session, we'll discuss about the inventory management. Inventory management is a part of working capital management. An efficient inventory management in trading and retail industries will help us to reduce the wastage and uh, reduce the production setups in the case of manufacturing company. Also, we can maintain a good amount of stocks to meet our sales targets, not to have excess inventories, not to have shortages. Let's discuss in detail uh, the inventory management issues. Um, assume that we have lots of inventory than the required. So you'll have a V cost investment on the inventory. You pay huge amount to the supplier on which you pay interest to the bankers. And not only that, you store the inventory with a great supervision. So you'll have to incur cost until the inventory is consumed or sold. So you should always take care in the inventory levels that what amount of inventory that should be maintained. Not only this, the inventory may be you know, lost due to low security, theft, accidents, or it may become outdated, obsolete inventory. Now, the benefits of having requisite inventory, like we want to maintain good amount of stock levels, good amount of stock levels, means what we don't care about the investment in inventory, we always want to maintain good amount of stock levels, not to have any shortages. So what benefits we have having lots of, you know, the inventory levels. The benefit is that there will be no production delays in case of manufacturing companies. So your production setup goes like smoothly. So no waiting for the material to come. There will be no production delays. Also, in case of, you know, the trading companies, there will be no uh, back orders. Back order means if you do not have inventory and a customer places an order, so you take um, order, you accept the order by accepting some advance. Say a customer places an order for 100 units, which are not there in your showroom at the rate of say $50. So the sale amount is going to be $5,000, but you don't have any inventory in your hand. So you may accept 20% as advance, that is $1,000, promising him that this will be arranged, the inventory will be arranged in 10 days time. So make sure that by accepting this thousand dollars, you're bound to deliver the 50 or 100 units at the rate of $50 in 10 days time from now. Such type of order is called as back order. It's very sensitive, why? Because within 10 days, you need to arrange the goods. If you are not able to, then you lose a customer, customer relationship, trust and all. So having an enough inventory, we can avoid this kind of, you know, issues or you don't want to accept any back orders but there is an order for 10 100 units selling price at the rate of 50 dollars having a sale of five thousand dollars you have a margin of 20 percent on these sales if you had this 100 units in your stock your sales would have been $5,000 on which you would have earned a margin of 20%. So you would have earned a profit of $1,000 having this stock. But because the inventory is not available, so you lost the order. You lost the order, therefore you lost the margin. The margins lost due to non-availability of the goods or called as stock out costs.
stockout costs. So we want to minimize the stockout cost or we do not want to have any kind of back order issues. So we'll have adequate inventory. We maintain good levels of inventories. In case of uh, manufacturing, we want to run our production setup, the production process smoothly by improving the inventory levels. But when we have heavy inventory levels, you may have to incur some costs called as carrying costs. Carrying costs include the interest on funds that are used to acquire the inventory. Say, for example, you purchase 10,000 units, 10,000 units in a bulk instead of buying 2,000, 1,500 like that, costing $50 per unit, your purchase price. So the purchase value is 500,000. On which, say, for example, this amount is borrowed at the rate of 6% per annum. So you are paying $30,000 interest on the borrowed funds. Instead, you can buy this in small orders. And you can reduce this interest cost. So when you buy uh, inventories at high levels, you may experience some kind of cost called carrying cost, which includes interest on the amount borrowed to acquire the inventory. Okay, you acquired the inventory, you need to store them until they are used, until they are sold. So storage and security, insurance of the warehouse, shrinkage by nature of the goods, spoilage, theft, breakage, accidents, obsolescence. The product may become outdated if the product is of like any fashion item or um, a technology based item it may become outdated that's called obsolescence it's a loss so we have benefits as well as some costs by maintaining heavy levels of inventory but what happens if you maintain low levels of inventory as we discussed here we purchase 10,000 units. No, we don't want to buy 10,000 units at once. We'll buy 1,000 units 10 times. If our requirement is 10,000 units, instead of buying 10,000 units at once, we buy 1,000 units 10 times. But each time you buy, there will be a cost involved in that. That's called ordering cost. So keeping in view of the carrying cost and ordering cost, we need to, uh, you know, maintain the certain inventory levels that are to be purchased every time you purchase. The ordering cost is also known as setup cost. This is a cost we incur each time an order is placed to the supplier. So the expenses of or, or the ordering cost include the you know the amount what we spent to bring the material all the way from supplier place to our warehouse whatever, whatever the expenses you spend to bring the material or goods from supplier place to our warehouse are called ordering cost so the ordering cost will increase as you increase the number of orders if orders number of orders increase the ordering cost will increase say for example 10000 units you buy at once say ordering cost is 150 dollars so 10000 units just one order multiplied by 150 dollars so you are buying in bulk in one order the ordering cost remains same 150 dollars so the total ordering cost is 150 dollars but remember you are investing lots of money on carrying costs because you're buying a V amount here. Instead, if you buy 1000 units each time, so you'll have to buy 10 times. So your number of orders is increased to 10 
and the ordering cost per order is $150. So your ordering cost will increase to $1,500. So when you buy, when you buy a large quantity, number of orders will decrease and the ordering cost will decrease. When you buy you no, know, large quantities or small quantities with the large number of orders, the ordering cost will increase. So you need to have a trade-off between these two, not to have heavy carrying cost, not to have heavy ordering cost. So what is that quantity that must be placed each time so that 